All righty, we've got a bunch of people in the room already, so we may as well get started. Um, uh, yeah, if you've just joined us, if you could please add your name to the attendees. Uh, let me drop a link in chat to the agenda. Um, and welcome everyone to the Qbert community meeting, January 10th. Um, yeah, or I think if, if you're east of the East Coast of Australia, it's already January 11th. Um, but for the majority of the people attending this meeting, it's January 10th. Um, yeah, so if uh, one thing we like to do before we get started is we like to offer an opportunity for anyone who is new or maybe they're not new, but they haven't introduced themselves before because they've been lurking. Uh, now's a, a good time to um, I'll mute my mic and you can just unmute and say good day, introduce yourself and kind of why you're here. I'm not new. Sorry, my cam is not working. But yeah, uh, we started a new company and now I'm working in uh, Ionix and we consume Kubevir to make open source pass platform, which is called Cosistech. Thank you. Uh, welcome again, uh, Andre. Thank you. Uh, was was that? I'm going to put into chat. Is that quasi stack like that? I'll put it there. Oh, no, Not exactly. Okay. <laughs> and congratulations on uh, on finding that job you're looking for. Thank you. Um, yeah. Is there anyone else who is new or would like to introduce themselves? The platform is not released yet, um, but we are going to release soon, uh, and it will be open source. Yeah, and we'll add it to adopters. We'll be happy to. Awesome, and that's a great point that Daniel's mentioned. Um, yeah, if, if you if you are new and you haven't introduced yourself um, in our Qbert Qbert. Um, uh, just in the, the main file there, uh, we have an adopters.md file. Um, so if you represent a company that uses Qbert in either an end user integration or vendor um, uh, manner, uh, we would love to have your name in our adopter. All you need to do is open a PR um, and yeah, uh, self-nominate and just need a little uh, quick description as to how you're using Qbert. All right, and with that, uh, we'll move on. Um, and yeah, as we go on, if you've got anything you'd like to add, please add it to the agenda and the notes for the open floor. If you've got a pull request, uh, Andre, I think your mic is still on. Uh, if you've got a pull request or a, uh, you've opened a bug, um, that you, uh, think needs some attention, um, please add it down here, pull requests and bug scrub, and we'll get to them. I couldn't see any bugs, so I put NA, but if you've got something that, You've got open, it's been open too long and you think it needs a bit more attention, by all means, pop the link in there and we'll hit it. Um, yeah, so without any further ado, let's have a quick check on the upcoming, well, the schedule first. So this is our version 1.2 schedule. Where are we? What, what date did I say it was? January 10th. Uh, so we've got nothing. Nice and easy. Um, always worth pointing out, I guess. The 6th of February is our feature freeze for 1.2, and the 27th of February is our GA. Just um, if I may chime in here. Um, Please do. Daniel, yes. Um, uh, Brian, do you want to tell or should I that we are uh, regarding 129? I believe there's it's, it's in the mailing list section there, but um, yeah, we're going to introduce the pre bit lanes for 129 today they won't be voting but they'll be always running against every pr um and hopefully again i think next week they're due to go to be required so hopefully we'll do that then next week yeah and for anyone uh that needs more information uh there is a link in the mailing list section um, and I think this is also worth pointing out that the older one, two, six pre-submit lanes will be disabled. So 
so long, 26. All right. Did anyone have anything else they wanted to throw in there about the schedule before we move on? We will move on. There are two uh, big CFPs currently open that I'm aware of. Um, as always, if you're aware of an event, whether it's something really regional just to your city, like a, oh, I can't remember what it's called, um, Kubernetes Community Day, KCDs, that's right. Um, uh, let me know and I can share with other people who uh, might be in the city um, or in that country. Um, but at the moment, we've got a CFP for North America, which is in Seattle in April. That CFP closes this Sunday, January 14th. The links are here in our wiki. Um, and DevConf uh, Czechia is going to be mid-June, and the CFP is open till March. Um, I can't speak for Open Source Summit North America, but um, it, it has an, a tremendous amount of um, micro-conferences. It is, a, it is a, uh, a conference, it is a cluster of micro-conferences, and it covers like a tremendous amount of different um, uh, themes and ideas and technologies. And so pretty much if you're here, you will find something that resonates. There is an open source. This one. Hello? This one should be a huge conference, isn't it? The open source summit? Oh, no, no, that conference says it. Uh, yeah, yeah. At the last year was the first time since the pandemic, and it was smaller than previous years. But it's, um, I think, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's big enough. I think it's a huge amount of fun, and it's re always really interesting. Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're anywhere near the area or have, um, you know, access to, like, the flats and stuff. Um, Open Source Summit EU will be in September. It does not yet have a CFP. Um, so don't feel like you'll, you'll miss out entirely on the open source zone. All right. And if you're going to be anywhere near Brussels, Belgium in February 3rd, 4th, we've got uh, four Qbert talks uh, there. And I haven't been told I'm not allowed to. So we will be lurking around the, I think it's the CentOS RDO OKD um, booth table stall, whatever they call it there. Um, with a bunch of uh, stickers and stuff. Um, I'll be there, I'll be wearing a Qbert shirt. Um, you, you probably can miss me, but um, uh, just, look at, just look for my shirt or my mustache. Alrighty. Um, yes, I just wanted to highlight that there. Ed, you've got something you'd like to speak to. Yeah, I ju it just a uh, reminder that there is this, uh proposal for a future life cycle that we would like to, to finalize. I, I said I will wait for the for the new year so everyone will be will have a fresh mind. So if you want to contribute or have uh, have anything to say on in this regard, then please comment on that uh, proposal. There is uh, for now. I, I there are we have only I think uh, two or three people that were participating there with comments. So this is why I'm raising it again. I hope to this will be closed this month. Sorry to say this month. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I would like this to be agreed and accepted this month. Yes. I couldn't tell if you said this month or this minute. That's one of the <laughs> this fairly optimistic. Today, today. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, the link is there. Um, please jump on there if this. I mean, this affects everyone, and so even if you are um, don't have any strong opinions, it's probably worthwhile reading just to familiarize familiarize yourself. Um, yeah, if you have any comments, please add them. Um, and thanks, Ed, for bringing that up. Um, later on. Uh, we'll be getting to, um, actually now, um, some of the old stall design proposals. Um, so we have a few of them there. So thank you for bringing up, moving along um, so that it doesn't kind of just peter out and run out of energy like some of these. Um, yeah, did anyone want to add anything to uh, Ed's point about his future life cycle proposal? All righty. Um, so I might just come back to these. Uh, I did say last week when I um, 
warned folks that we would do it after the reviews. Uh, so I don't want to be a mistruth teller. So we will just have a quick uh, jump ahead to the pull requests. There was only one. So thank you to all of our reviewers. Um, all right, no one's jumped on it. Um, all righty, I think, yeah, this is their first PR. Um, adding subpart and read-only mount option support for vert EOFS. Um, let's have a quick look at it. Okay, so it's quite small. Um, I can see that it needs to have none put into the release note. Uh, yeah, is there anyone on the line who is able to take a look at this? Very short, sure. Pierre. I can, I can help. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Alay. Um, CC, is it A Patel? Uh, yeah, A -Y. Alay Patel. Alay Patel. Oh. Oh, I think uh, you're missing uh, it. Yeah. Yep. Tell 07. Thank you. Easy. All right. And, and we've already covered one of the mailing lists um, that we're bringing up. Uh, the other one uh, was also raised by Brian about it um, ongoing. So, Brian, did you want to just quickly um, tell us about that? Um, yeah, I, I hope my bank is a bit better this time. Um, yeah, so there was an ongoing issue in GitHub yesterday, so the incident was resolved uh, about an hour or two later, but it did have uh, impact, a kind of follow-on impact to Prow, so we had a bit of a build-up of jobs, but hopefully that should be getting a bit better now, so things should be coming back to normal today. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, all righty, so that kind of runs to the, the end of our regular agenda. Uh, and yeah, if you've got something you would like to add, uh, I can see um, Andre has added a couple of things. Um, were, uh, Andre, did you add these as part of the design proposals to look at or as part of the open floor? Uh, the first one put not by me. <laughs> I don't know oh, if okay. I put it there. Uh, it's just stack uh, pull requests. There is ready implementation and ready um, design proposal. But I don't know about uh, what should be done there. Yeah, you mean about Macvatap? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, there is still a question. Um, I have a company. Uh, they're currently my clients and they would like to have to have this merged because they already use this for uh, production. And I would like to know if it's possible to get it merged. And if so, I will write uh, tests and I don't know everything needs to make it merged. Um, I think I was the one who commented on that one at, at the latest. Um, so um, I was understanding that um, that the issue was that Eddie probably pointed out that there is now a plugin system for networking and that this should be implemented in the style that is now available for plugins for networking. But maybe Eddie, you can probably chime in better on that, what you what you exactly you meant with your comment on that. Yeah, I was talking with this client if it's if he wants to reimplement it as a CNI plugin using new plug pluggable system. But there are few issues. Uh, the first one that you still need sidecar for running DHCP server. And the second one, actually, I don't remember already. There were some second issue. So. Anyway, I think it might be a good replacement for bridge method because it is more secure and more uh, fast 
it has less latency. And I'm still thinking if it's possible to merge it in three. Yeah, I, so yeah. I think we, this is not the only one that uh, came mm -hmm. up. So this is Megvitap and we had others. Uh, there was a DPDK one and there was a migration one with a bridge, I think. There were several proposals and even more, but I don't remember all of them with all kind of uh, small tweaks. And we identified that we are unable to maintain such a large number of options. And it, even the existing ones that were added, that are already in, are mm -hmm. causing us a lot of uh, issues in terms of maintenance. So because of that, we decided that we will create this uh, plugin mechanism and we will, uh, the, the kind of a framework that will allow integration for anyone that wants to do some special things in. Mm -hmm. And we will take out all the things that we are not really, it's like all of all of the things that were experimental anyway, like all the things that were feature gated are taken out. And even, even the slurp one, which is very, very old and probably no one uses it. We also uh, in, took it took it out to such to such a plugin. So the answer will be that uh, if someone wants to add something new, unless this is very common for everyone else, like it's a re total replacement, then it will probably not be not be taken in. But if someone uh, manages to convince that uh, there is a better option that, uh, for example, replacing bridge with another bridge, with another implementation, then that can be discussed. But in my opinion, the MacVitap uh, solution here is is still specific because the bridge one, uh, the MacVitap option will not support some of the scenarios that the bridge one is supporting. For example, we are using uh, not some, I mean, there are, People that are using uh, Covert as uh, uh, to run another uh, uh, to run Covert inside of it as nodes, like the VMs are the they run Covert on bare metal, and then mm -hmm. the virtual machines are that are running in Covert are actually nodes of a Kubernetes cluster. So in this case, do we need the bridge because uh, MacVitap will not allow. Will will maybe yeah, it will work just with single MAC address. Yes, single Correct. IP, yeah, single MAC address. Yes. So this is like a, um, I do understand that it is useful, but uh, it's also problematic because there are disadvantages here, and I'm not sure that the community will will be able to accept uh, a change in the current bridge one. It's like the solution will be to change the current bridge. Uh, binding to this make to use MacVitap instead and that's like i think it's problematic there is some uh, talks at, the, at least uh, in there are some talks in general that are not yet public about pro perhaps in the future replacing the bridge and the masquerade binding with the past binding mm -hmm. i don't know if it's possible to do it for everything but uh, but for at least for the primary network, that's uh, an option that is on the table. But if we are very in early stages. We are just experimenting with past at the moment, and uh, we will see how it will go. Um, okay, got it. Is there any results of performance testing of past? This is part of the preparation. So the first, I think, the what we will probably do in the next month or two is to is to to make sure it's uh, it will be support migration and all kind of other things, and once this is, all the functionality is uh, we have uh, will be fine with the functionality, then we'll move to testing performance, and then we will see. Like this is part of the planning. Got it. Thank you. Uh, one more question is that uh, okay? We agree that. We will not put it into in tree plugin. It's so it's better to implement it as out of tree plugin. 
Uh, one more question is that out of three plugin API currently not allowing to run DHCP server. And I think uh, what the best option for uh, utilizing it to extend kubevirt to this plugin API for running for allow run, running DHCP server or for implementing uh, it on plugin site as library. Um, for you mean you mean the existing uh, solution that we have with plugins that are we don't have uh, an example of, of working with DHCP. This is what you mean. Yeah, there is no uh, any opportunity to use entry kubevir DHCP server, which is uh, on the launcher side. Yeah, so in general, you it is possible. It's it exists. As, I mean, we didn't we didn't play with it yet. We like we are uh, we have thoughts of also working on making a plugin from the bridge binding just for uh, showing how it can be done. Uh, but we didn't did that. We didn't do that. But in general, the the sidecar is meant to be used as a. I mean, if you run the sidecar, you are supposed to be able also to to run the DHCP server. Then, I mean, that was the ori original idea. Okay, got it. So, I have no more questions about this PR. I think it's better to keep it open because the client will continue supporting it as is right now. So it, he'll updating by uh, for every kubevirt release because they still use it. And if they will have any idea to moving into plugin side, I will help. If they will support, uh, if they will sponsor that, I will happy to do that. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, just be just note that uh, I don't know if this is merits uh, leaving the PR open because it's actually not going to be taken. But uh, but I I personally don't mind. The the only thing that you should be aware of is that the code really changed a lot, at least from this uh, PR for sure. Like in the last few versions, the code, mm -hmm. the network code changed a lot, and uh, and you should be aware of that. Like. If you'll need to, if you think that it will, it will not be easy to rebase. That's what I mean. Okay, just, got it. it. Just, I will it, try it to just explain. Like this. Work. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll try to explain this to the customer, so they will make right decision about moving to plugin. And someone put also my my another proposal in the top a live migration for Bridget Pod Network. Am I yeah, that was me. Yeah. Please go ahead. Um, well, uh, well, just before we hit those design proposals, we'll just uh, quickly hit uh, Vivek's point about the updates of Kubernetes. Um, Vivek, did you want to uh, speak to that? Uh, yeah. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vivek. I work for this uh, company where we have a data management project or let's say product for applications that are deployed on Kubernetes. Uh, so we we use uh, Kubernetes and sorry KubeWord and CDI related modules very heavily. And recently we were planning to update the Kubernetes related modules in our project. And that th that is kind of uh, the version of Kubernetes modules that KubeWord consumes right now. That is I think dot uh, two six uh, is is a bit problematic for us. And we were also considering to, let's say, generate the client sets manually and then use that. But later we got to know that we will have to generate uh, the CDI related clients as well. So we will have to generate basically Kubert resource client sets, CDI client sets. So just wanted to discuss if someone is already doing this, uh, is there a better way to do this? And is this somehow related to the other thing that we were just talking about a minute back, uh, enable E2 e lanes for latest Kubernetes version, uh, a pull request on project infra. So does that mean after that pull request, are we also planning to maybe update the Kubernetes related modules? So, yeah. Hello. Yeah, so I, 
personally, I think we probably are overdue updating 26 libraries are pretty old. Um, we should probably be um, 28 or 29, I think. I don't know. Um, but I do think that um, there's always, you know, if, if for people using the API resources, I think there's always going to be a version version mismatch. You know, when we update, there are going to be people with older. Oh, and I I just think, um, yeah. Unfortunately, uh, there's the client gen. There's also, I don't know if you've looked into the controller runtime client. That is more of a dynamic, uh, not as type safe thing where you can use uh, any API resources. But yeah, um, I, I think we should update, but I think the general problem still remains where there's going to be um, sometimes a, a mismatch. Uh, yeah, makes sense. So yeah, I think in that case, the recommendation here would be to just generate the clients for Qbert as well as CDI, right? Or use controller runtime, like you said. Yeah, like if you look in um, in the Qbert build process, it, it generates a bunch of, like it, Qbert generates the CDI clients. Um, it, you know, there's a, there's, um, it's just part of the build where we build a bunch of different clients. Uh -huh. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, Alex shared that pull request from Qbert one zero two six eight in the chats. Yeah, I, we do did look into that pull that that pull request. the the only The only reason I wanted to discuss about this here is uh, apart from Qbert, we will also have to generate CDI client, and by generate, I think we will have to see. Uh, do we just have to generate, or we will have to let's say uh maintain it by maintain i mean do we have to upgrade it later and then things like that so yeah it, it looks like that is the only option that that we have right now so we will have to do that anyway so yeah I, I think... um so there is one more option um <clears throat> client go support something called a dynamic client where you can give a group version resource of of the resources that you are working with so like CDI clients and Qbert clients, and then um, use use that um, client for you know patching resources and things like that. I'm going to put that in the chat. I'm not sure if that is something that that can help you, but you will pay some kind of uh, performance penalty here uh, because it works on. Um, reflection internally, uh, but it will get you, you know, to avoid all, all the code generation. So depending on the trade-offs, you can take them. Right, makes sense. Uh, yeah, we did consider dynamic client, and the only problem is even if we use dynamic client, let's say, right, uh, we will have to somehow, uh, I mean, it, it obviously uh, deals with unstructured resources, so the resource that we would get obviously is going to be unstructured. And then, for example, type casting that to concrete resource if you want to work on that. So these are the challenges that we are going to get into, yeah. I think, if we use dynamic client. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Understandable. I think yeah. that might not be a very um, a good option. Then. Right. I, I think uh, the, the things that we have considered till now I think, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I think controller runtime sounds better because we don't have to, let's say, generate and maintain things, uh, but we are not writing any controller or anything around, around these resources. So that is the reason we are also in, we were also inclined towards generating, generating the clients. But anyway, I think I have, uh, kind of, uh, detailed answer to my question uh we will be able to make the decision now i think yeah. yeah and one more thing to just add um generating client once you set it up you can pipeline it in in a ci cd um ecosystem like how um Hubert does it i think we publish the generated clients in a separate repo automatically 
Um, so it might not be that costly um, when, once you set it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Just to check, are you just trying to basically get a client um, registered with the correct Kubevert um, schemas for the CRDs? Yeah, I, that, I think- Is that what you're trying to do? Um, cause if so, basically you can use like the suggestion to use controller runtimes, um, probably spot on, um, because as long as you can actually access the schema um, and the group version, everything from Kubevert repos, you can use controller runtime um, to generate a schema and you just pass that to the controller runtime client and it gives you a Kubernetes client you can use. I uh, Yeah, most of the times we are just trying to interact with the resources, uh, nothing more fancy. So maybe maybe controller runtime would be able to help us here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think that's probably, um, probably your best bet. Right. Um, um, I, oh, I did have uh, one more question. Um, <clears throat> so I, I missed the part where um, upstream keyword clients um, don't work for you, Vivek. Um, is there a reason why you need to be ahead of the, the curve um, that, that is shipped with uh, upstream keyword releases? Uh, yeah, I mean, for example, let's say right now, upstream keyword uses, like I said, 0 0.26 of Kubernetes modules. And uh, because of some reasons, let's say because of security issues, let's say there are some vulnerabilities on that version, we have to uh, consume, let's say, newer version of Kubernetes modules. So security vulnerabilities is one of the main reasons, but other reasons of, let's say, other reasons are, let's say, just, just using the updated or recent client. Yeah, but but security vulnerabilities are the main reasons, yes. I see. Makes sense. So um, I, I think uh, it might be good to to have all those pat patches uh, upstream. If you are anyway maintaining those, um, I think we can, you know, accept them here. Uh, and, and the Kubernetes clients um, do indeed support um, plus or minus um, version. So unless you need a, a brand new API, um, that is not supported in those clients. Um, at least my uh, my personal recommendation would be that uh, using um, up, as much upstream as possible and then bringing um, those fixes here but might be you know also an option. So do you mean raising the PR upstream to update the Kubernetes library version? Yeah, so if those um, security fixes are something that, that are well-published um, CVEs, um, I I do think that the entire community can benefit from, um, you know, those findings. So depending on, you know, those fixes, we can accept that the, those PRs here. Um, I'll let other chime in on that opinion, but, but that's my personal, uh, you know, thoughts. Mm -hmm. I, I understand, yeah. Um, yeah, so does that uh, satisfy your question? Yeah, yeah, that does, yes. Awesome. Um, I, this question is to all the people that have um, responded with helping with this. Uh, is this uh, is this a hole in our documentation, or would this be useful for uh, a blog post, perhaps, to help other people in the same boat? Uh, to answer Alex's question, Alex Alexander Wells, sorry, I I maybe cut you off, but I I tried to we try to we try to consume CDI upstream as well, uh, but yeah, this was the reason we were not able to do that because CDI is also using 
uh, 1.26. And yeah, so that is the reason I was saying we will have to generate client sets for uh, CDI related resources as well. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, I'm, I'm the maintainer of CDI. So I'm like, uh, yeah, I should probably update that. So that will probably happen relatively soon. Okay, makes sense. Uh, yeah, I was wondering, yeah, does like, is, is this useful documentation or a useful blog post? Um, or is, uh, are people happy to solve this in their own kind of way? It, it's probably uh, useful for a blog post to sort of explain the options. And you know, for different people, different things might make more sense. So. Hmm. Interesting. Um, the much uh, much more dangerous question: Who is interested in taking uh, this on and writing a blog post that blog post that covers these options? So I, I do it, but I'm I'm like buried in stuff right now. Uh, but I suspect I'm actually going to run into this particular issue relatively soon on what I'm working on. So I, I might end up doing it. So. Excellent. Um, I, what I might do is I might create an issue um, and I can post it in, next week um, so that people can be made aware of it. And then, um, yeah, we, we can uh, take it from there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, all right, so Ed has marked, so the, the idea for those that weren't here last week um, was that I wanted to use 10, 15 minutes, um, which I'll just do 10 minutes um, since we have run reasonably well along this meeting. Just go through some old design proposals. Um, and I've gone from the bottom of the list up um, I optimistically thought we'd have time to do five. Uh, we'll probably just do the one. Um, Ed has marked that three of them all relate to the same thing that he said for Andre's um, MacVitap binding method PR. And so I'm going to, he doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to ask him to um, write a comment across them. And then unless people object, we will close those uh, for the reason uh, previously given. So I just thought uh, maybe we'll have uh, in the last 10 minutes, We'll have a look at this one. So the idea here is that these are old design proposals. Um, for whatever reason, they have run out of puff. And so maybe they just need a little bit um, to move along. Maybe um, they should be closed. Although this one's move lifecycle rotten. Do we have any of the people that have already reviewed this PR on the line. I think I saw, no point fingers, I think I saw Jed maybe had already reviewed this. I'm not sure Barag is working on this anymore. I think it might be that we dropped the the effort. Okay. Is it like, is it that person may not be working on it? Uh, is it still a good idea? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, in which case, so just quickly, adding the ability to find the best match for CPU model dynamically after a VMI is scheduled to a node. Um, let's have a quick look at the comments. I couldn't see anything as to why this wouldn't be accepted as it currently is. Um, okay. Jed's already approved it. Uh, this could be why. Uh, I heard a question regarding this. So if we had this feature, um, I saw another feature where um, host model changed due to um, rel version and we had to create a migration 
um, support. Uh, would this feature, you know, solve the need to, um, you know, keep migrating on, on underlying post OS upgrade? You probably mean the proposal for machine type, right? Yes. And so no, in that case, uh, this is a different topic. This is more about um, you have many servers with different generation of uh, Intel, for example, and uh, right. each of the each of the server would propagate different uh, CPU model. And here we are trying to find the best CPU model, which is compatible for most servers. So when you start a VM with this CPU model, you can migrate it um, to most of the pro uh, most of the servers. Consider it, consider it, consider it as uh, the new gen is uh, most likely supporting the old uh, CPU model, uh, but the old one cannot support the new one. Makes sense. Thanks. I might be difficult to get both Inma and Barack onto this. Um, which case, uh, Ale, you're here. Maybe I'll have a quick look at this one. I believe this is yours. Yes. Yeah. Um, what do we need here to get this uh, resolved? So I think we we need more um, maintainers to to take a look and chime in on their thoughts. Alrighty, already have a few. Um, I see uh, Jed and Lubo, and I think Ed's already looked at it. Yeah, I will take it uh, next Monday and try to gather folks and uh, talk about it. Awesome, that'd be amazing. We can shift it along. Uh, um, Lugo, if um, if this is going to be uh, in in an open channels, you know, feel free to you know, send me an invite. I'll try to to join that call. Sure. Yeah. Uh, is this um, is this more or less the result of the? or at least tie into the SIG API uh, meeting? Yeah, so whatever is being proposed here, um, we are regularly following that process in the SIG API. I, uh, I see a couple folks joining regularly there uh, and having discussions around this. Cool. Um, yeah, so for those that don't know, SIG API is a new group. Yeah, that meeting is going to continue currently, at least for a little while further or indefinitely? Um, we are going to continue with the current cadence until um, this proposal merges um, and or um, we have settled down on a definite process. Um, once we find out that, okay, this process works for us, I think the plan is to um, change the cadence a little bit to bi-weekly. Uh, but okay. yeah, um, and then we can take further calls as to a specific meeting, is it? Okay. Um, All righty, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, so if anyone um, is unaware, there is a SIG API meeting at, I, uh, I think it's 2 p.m. Um, UTC. What, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Not ultimate time zone. Uh, universal, universal time um, on Tuesdays. So I think that's at 3 p.m. Central Europe and 9 a.m. East Coast US. Is that 
that right? That's not good. Yes. Ah, excellent. Um, yeah, and the last couple have been canceled, I think, for holidays and in attendance. But uh, presumably, uh, especially after a wonderful review of this proposal, yeah, there may be some attendance uh, next week for those interested in joining along. Um, we've got three minutes before my uh, 10 minutes is up. Uh, so we'll have a, just a quick look at this one. Uh, Helm charts. Now this one kind of gets uh, infrequent attention. Um, where are we up to with this? This was, yeah. Um, just about addressing Helm chart installation method alternatives. Uh, Running things here, nicely matches and stuff. Still interested. None of you have this guy interested. Um, yeah, as Anyone able to, I mean, it, it looks like this has been addressed. It looks as though from, oh, that doesn't give me an automation sickness. It looks as though this is tying into, uh, yep, yeah, there's enough interest. People to be raising issues about this. Um, yeah, is, is anyone able to speak to what we need to get this over the line? at all. We are coming up to time, so I will leave that question hanging until next week. Uh, if you are a project maintainer or a reviewer, um, now this is in the community repo, um, or if you have a vested interest in seeing Helm charts or you have concerns about this, um, please uh, follow the link and address those um, on, the, on the PDR here. Alrighty, uh, we are at time. I believe we've covered everything. This has been a nice big meeting. Thank you very much for everyone uh, for, for weighing in, for being here and for being part of the community. Um, I'll leave a couple of seconds in case anyone wants to jump in with something that has not been addressed. In which case, I hope everyone has a lovely rest of the day, a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you very much. Thanks, bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you, bye.